Hi everyone, my name is Saeed Golami. I am the founder and CEO at I Care Better. People call me Saeed or Dr. Golami. You can call me whatever you want to. It doesn't um, impact our relationship, however you want to call me. The reason I'm recording this video is that um, there has been a lot of changes happening in endometriosis community and in eye care better recently and um, i have been mostly observing the changes and uh, of course we have been the driver of change for so many things but i've tried to be low-key and put my head down and focus on our work and deliver the best tools and uh, software and care to patients and help doctors to achieve the best care for their patients so that has been our goal um, but i thought um, this is the right time to start talking to the community directly because a lot of changes are going to happen in the future which are very significant probably define the next few years of endometriosis care and uh, we will be part of that change so we will be driving the change as much as we can uh, of course it's not going to be only us there is going there are a lot of other people who are doing great things but we are one of them and uh, so we are committed to doing a lot of great things but the next things are more significant and bigger than the past things so I thought um, I should start building the dialogue and communication with everyone here in this community. So you hear directly from me because I assume you have heard about me from other people, maybe good or bad. Um, of course, um, people can have their opinions, but um, you can um, hear directly from me and ask questions under this video. Drop your comments if you want to if you want me to talk about any other topics uh, share my opinions or share my history or my side of this story on any topic that you have questions about just drop your comments I'll be happy to answer so with that intro out of the way uh, I want to review the um, history of I care better up to now and a lot of important things that has happened and probably you never heard my side of the story but i think it's the time to share to share uh, i care better when we started the company it was purely educational company and we were focused on uh, educating endometriosis patients and the, the reason for for our interest my interest in endometriosis was when i was in medical school uh, i remember having a patient a 35 year old patient who had monthly bleeding uh, monthly rectal bleeding and uh, no one knew what's wrong with her and uh, but then when i talked to her i was a medical student and um, dig deeper and discuss and it was always at the same time as period i did some google search and boom it was endometriosis uh, but then the patient keep coming back because there is no one in the country to treat bowel endometriosis. So that really stuck with me. That was one of the most defining points in my uh, education uh, as a medical student. So after, long story short, when I finished, I started working and focused on chronic illnesses and then focused on endometriosis, created the educational platform. But then the question was... Uh, from patients that regardless of what education you give us how we are going to find the right doctor and uh, so we try to find different ways like go into resumes go into like the community as patients who is the best everything could be biased um, with some sort of manipulations then I found this article in New England Journal of Medicine and uh, it was published in 2013, which showed video vetting of surgery, especially laparoscopy surgery, uh, can actually predict the outcome. So if a surgeon gets higher scores from their peers, 
on the video vetting, the outcome is going to be better. So there was this article in New England Journal of Medicine. You can uh, go and find it online. And then I met with Dr. Vidali and Dr. Mossbrocker and discussed this. They had this idea on their own other side. And pr- obviously this wasn't like we didn't invent the idea. The idea was out there and we also find, our, find it on an article. Other people had it. But we discussed with Dr. Masbrocker and Vidali, created the vetting system and started the vetting process. So the vetting idea was surgeons sent three surgical videos and uh, we de-identified the videos and get three other surgeons to review them. And then if the surgeon gets a score above 70%, they, are, they pass the vetting. If it's below 70%, we give them the comments and they can go and fix the issues and resend their videos to uh, get reviewed again so that was uh, the basis for I care better vetting process and surgery surgery directory and it was in my opinion the most transparent and the most advanced way of vetting a surgeon it was in my opinion a genius idea by the ones who generated it I just uh, brought it to endometriosis so thank you whoever had the idea thank you because we have held a lot of patients. So we, we created the platform and uh, we added the, mm, the vetting and then now we started vetting doctors by uh, their peers and, and a lot of doctors passed, a lot of doctors didn't pass. Uh, probably some of high profile doctor, high profile doctors didn't pass. And that, start, that was the start point for us to basically get some pushback from the community and from the surgeons that this is not fair, you're probably excluding doctors and, and things. Then we showed this is unbiased, this is double blind, this is international. We tried to reduce the biases by, for example, having a, a US doctor be reviewed by someone in another country and vice versa. So we tried to mitigate a lot of the biases and concerns to make the process uh, extensive enough. One thing that was very important and critical from the beginning was how skilled a surgeon is in different aspects of endometriosis, meaning not just like, for example, pelvic. Like, does a surgeon know how to operate on the like, urinary tract or bowel? And I don't mean like the surgeon, the gynecologist go do the operation. Obviously, there's some legal issues there. They can, not every gynecologist can do that, but the team mentality, like a multidisciplinary approach, have the right team, the right approach that if a patient has a bowel uh, lesion, cut that lesion and have a bowel sur- surgeon to help you with that. So that mentality was important to us. So then that's why we created multiple categories of vetting. So if a surgeon passed the vetting in uh, only pelvic area or also the bowel, the bladder and other regions, diaphragm, other regions as well. So, so we started the vetting and we started to have segmented vetting for different re- regions. And it was really uh, fascinating to see the results and, pay- and doctors who go through the vetting, they love the comments of their peers because they don't get any comments or or review of their work after they are finished and they start working as an attending. So that's probably, for some of them, it was probably the first time hearing an honest feedback after maybe 20, 30 years of practicing. And that honest feedback was because they didn't know who the surgeon is, so they just gave it. And they just were pretty transparent and honest. So no problem there. Um, So that was the basis for the vetting and segmenting the, the lesions. And we were really respected, I care better was respected and supported by a lot of uh, surgeons and advocates and also we were antagonized by a lot of surgeons and advocates at the beginning. Uh, but there was a very significant moment in the uh, life of the company and that was, a, there was a consensus uh, behind the scene consensus in uh, advocacy community and maybe surgeons, I didn't ask surgeons, but advocacy community that there was a general idea about some surgeons, like this surgeon is good, this surgeon is bad, or no, this surgeon is not that good even though the brand is really good, the person's brand or the, the hospital's brand is really good. 
and I was like new to this community, right? I believed them that if they say this surgeon is not good, I was like, this surgeon is not good because these are patients turning advocates, so patients know the best. Um, but I, anyway, it didn't even matter if I believed them or not, but deep down in my heart, I believed them. And uh, so fast forward, we go uh, get to a point that uh, a controversial surgeon applies for the vetting uh, because there is a lot of rumors around him that he's not a good surgeon and he doesn't know what he does. And uh, the surgeon was in Boston. I don't say his name. Uh, he's an amazing surgeon. Obviously, I'll tell you why I think he's an amazing surgeon now. Uh, but uh, so he... He was under pressure by a lot of advocates and then he was, uh, he, he, he was advised by some patients and, and important advocacy groups to apply to eye care better vetting and be vetted in a double blind system. Everyone was like, let's, okay, let's disregard the rumors, focus on the vetting, see if the vetting proves your skills or not. The surgeon calls me and, and asks me, can you help the vetting? And I said, of course. And I actually waived the fee for him. So I care better, me, make no, makes no money from him. We don't charge him. And I told him, we are not going to charge you anyway for the honor of his. He had to pay for the review because that money goes to the reviewers. So we wouldn't make any money out of it anyway. So... Uh, so there was no conflict of interest for us in terms of financials. We don't make money with him. So he pay, applies and I pick three reviewers for him which had the least conflicts with him in terms of location and geography and brand, like, you know, everything, region. And, and, uh, and some of the reviewers are loved and are very, like, highly regarded by uh, advocacy community as good surgeons like top class surgeons and they of course were video vetted so they are really top class and highly regarded in my opinion I respect them so like greatly like they are amazing but I'm um, the point is advocates also respected the reviewers that I sent these surgeons surgeries to those reviewers the reviews come back and this surgeon gets passing score for every single category that he wanted for pelvic endometrioma bowel bladder like whatever he wanted and he submitted the video he gets a passing score so that's important right because it's a double blind review i have nothing to do with it i am just this company who created the vetting process reviewers reviewed it he gets some comments of course um, we should, he should get the comments, but uh, ultimately he passed. So, and I announced it. So that announcement created so much chaos and uh, drama around I Care Better, which I didn't want to, I didn't even believe it. I didn't even believe this is happening to me. I was like, everyone invited us and accepted us, I Care Better, as this unbiased platform that video vets surgeons, and if it's a yes, everyone should accept the yes. And if it's no, everyone should accept the no. But now we have this surgeon who everyone before the vetting said is a bad surgeon, but the, uh, he applied and he passed. Now everyone says, no, he's a still a bad surgeon because we say he's a bad surgeon. Vetting doesn't matter. So that was the first alarm that went off for me like am i like who am i talking to like who are these people but um but still i i continued digging deep in this case at the same time that he was attacked and we were attacked because of his vetting by many uh, ad patients and advocates a lot of surgeons messaged me and supported this surgeon like they said he's one of the best of the best that they ever saw and they were taught by him. And he's like a world class, he wins all the awards whenever it's technical. Even like the, the leader, the gurus of the surgery and the people that endometriosis community respects so, so much, 
those surgeons also respect this surgeon as a good surgeon. But some advocates which were vocal said, no, he's not good. No, he shouldn't be better. Just remove him as long as he's on I care better. We don't trust I care better. My responsibility was not to define who advocates think is a good or bad. I think there's another list for patient recommended surgeons. We can, if you know what that list is, it's Nancy's Nook list. It's patients recommended. So you can go and impact that list. But for vetting, you cannot question the process or question the whole thing because the process got someone approved that you didn't like. So, lying, but that's not the most important part. That was my judgment. But, but I just completely disregarded my own feelings and I focused on patients. So, a lot of patients reached out that I am very, they were very disappointed and they were very frustrated by I care better. It broke my heart. I can completely understood how uh, disappointing this could be if a surgeon really is not good and gets vetted. And I asked them, did you have a bad experience? Can you explain the experience? You know what blew my mind? Not even one of them were his patients. Everyone heard from someone that he is a bad surgeon. So not even one, page, one of these people who texted me on Instagram or Facebook blaming him and like attacking us and being frustrated at us, being ag angry at us about this surgeon being vetted, none of them actually responded that yes, I am a patient of him or I am willing to share my experience. None. Most of them, at least the one that I remember, all of them, they said, no, we just hear that he's a bad surgeon. That's, that's what made us very frustrated. So we are in a situation that people think he's a bad surgeon and they, not even, they are not even his patients and he is actually passing the vetting with really high scores and other surgeons who have worked with him or has been, have been there, his students, his basic trainees, confirm his skills and they are already vetted. So I, anyway, I care better couldn't change his policy. We were like, whoever applies and gets vetted, that's a done deal. We don't go back on that. We kept his name and we, but decided to do one thing. We decided to help him hear patients' concerns. So what, what we did, we invited a couple of advocacy groups to have a meeting with him, mediated by I Care Better and another advocate in Boston. So we decided to have this meeting. I asked the doctor to give us some availabilities. He gave us a full week of availability. And what I'm telling you is all evidenced in emails. Like I can give you screenshots of emails if needed. So everything is evidence, documented. So back to back to the story so he gives us all these availabilities of the full week like hours of every day and he's a surgeon like he's trying hard to to make time for then i go back to the advocacy groups who were like mad and who were like frustrated and ask them introduce us someone as your representative they introduce someone and they never part give us any time for the meetings. So doctor says, I am willing to sit in this meeting and, and hear your thoughts and concerns. And okay, if I have made mistakes in terms of like behaviors or not understanding your point of view, let's sit, tell me what to do. And he's the chief of the department. So he could, it could have an impact on a department. But then the advocates don't participate, don't even give the time, like no, mute, silence, like pure silence. Then it went like for a couple of days and weeks, we tried to have the meeting. Meeting didn't happen because of the silence from the advocates they didn't want to be in that meeting and hear and tell their side of the story to this doctor, maybe help him understand the, the situation and maybe get him to fix the, all the situ issues that they had in the department. No. So all we had in this case, in this situation, was a doctor was vetted in a double blind peer reviewed process and some people are mad and are angry and they don't like him and they say he's not a good surgeon. There's no evidence 
Of course, there are going to be surgeons out, patients out there who are not happy with the results or, but you know, every surgeon, the best of the best can have patients out there not liking the results. But, you know, we can't go like be like single cases, but generally, like if someone is so mad and so disappointed and have talked, they never came like forward to talk to us. And then we want to have this meeting between him and these advocates who say he's not a good and advocates don't even participate don't even give us a time so that was basically the point that i concluded this case is closed anyway we, I, I had no plan to remove him from i care better okay that was a done deal that was everyone agreed on it i care better does the vetting everyone should agree with it i wasn't planning to remove him but i was planning to get him to listen advocates and patients but patients and advocates didn't participate so it wasn't his fault so he stayed on eye care better and since he has been on eye care better a lot of patients have gone to him and he has opened his own international centers uh, center and I hear nothing just good except good feedback and good reviews from him since he has been on eye care better and he has created a movement in his own like in another country now everyone in that country is benefiting from his knowledge and the movement that he has created and the patients there have a center to go to to actually understand endometriosis excision and get an endometriosis excision surgery before that it was like all dismissal and gaslighting so this person who has done so much good for this community and the, the other community in the other worlds was vetted and people didn't like him and no one was willing to step, step up and talk and say this was me who didn't like him and this is what this is my evidence so we stood up uh, for our values and for our unbiased vetting process and that has caused us a lot of issues a lot of disappointments by by uh, advocates but Deep down, I am very proud because we stood, we stood up for our values and we didn't back down. The result of that has been our platform has grown by 20x. We have a thousand patients per day using our platforms. We have over 240 providers all over the world. And we have helped so many surgeons to expand their practice and to develop their practice. And we have helped thousands of patients to find the right doctor. So regardless of what some specific people say about us or say about the vetting, the, the, fact, the, the fact is vetting is so important. And and video vetting is the most important, the most uh, transparent way that we already have for assessing an endometriosis excision surgeon skills. There are a lot of other ways, but you know, he says, she says, reviews, like I like him or not, or I like her or not. But one thing which is unbiased is like the video vetting. So we, because of that, we, we will emphasize the vetting we will encourage every single excision surgeon to go through the vetting see the feedback of their peers if they pass awesome if not see the feedback fix some part of the procedure and approach come back and get vetted this is important for patients this is important for doctors and we are planning to just grow the platform to get more surgeons vetted and to be more impactful in patients' life and surgeons' lives. So this is my first video of many to come, but I thought I should answer this uh, question and this discussion here because um, I had never had time to, to answer and I never wanted to bring up this issue, but this is the time to really uh, regain some of our uh, you know, credibility that we lost because of that, which I think was totally unfair. And uh, with the changes and things that we are going to do in future, we are going to only grow. 
and uh, a lot of patients are going to benefit and a lot of doctors are going to benefit and we are hoping to help create the next group of surgeons and you know a path for extensive accessible care for all patients with endometriosis and we are not going to stop we are just going to grow and the platform has grown only growth that's the only thing that we have seen in the past two or three years so thank you so much for listening if you have any questions or comments drop it in the comment we are an open platform you can even your question or comment could be against everything I said. You can say whatever you want to me, to our platform. Just be respectful, please, to each other and to the doctors. And uh, let's create a good community together. Uh, I stand behind every one of you. I, I help. I want to help you. I want to support you. I want to make sure that you get the best care possible in the world as a patient. And I am really trying to help surgeons to build centers that can deliver the absolute best care. That's my goal. That's my dream. That's my vision. And um, a lot of great things will happen in the next couple of months. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk more about everything we are going to do and we are doing and we have done. And uh, let's just stay in touch. Thank you.